Our minds are littered with information, but Coda makes dealing with and organizing all that info a breeze. And that's why in this video, I wanna give a quick tutorial on what Coda is and really how you can use it to create workflows in your life that make everything more efficient. Starting off, Coda has four main building blocks. We have our pages, we have our docs, we have our tables, and we have some elements. Going with our first one, we'll go over docs. Docs are kind of like our house, basically. They can store a lot of information and we can manage permissions within the docs. Docs aren't limited in Coda, so you can have as many as you want. And if you need to delegate access for specific things, you can do so there. Second, we have our pages. Our pages are like our rooms within our house, right? And so maybe we can have one room that's like a time punch room. Maybe we can have another one that's like our projects, maybe within our tasks. And then maybe we have one that's like our overview. overview. So when someone comes to the dock, they can get a good overview of what it is, kind of like a living room to set the tone, right? And all of it lives with inside our dock, our initial first step. Uh, our third step we can say is our elements. Our elements you can imagine is like furniture, right? So you can have a house, you can have rooms, but what's the point if there's no furniture, right? It's just gonna be bland. So we use our elements, stuff like headings, stuff like lines, dividers, buttons, all of this stuff we can use inside our dock to really decorate it and make it actual, make it functional. And our fourth step, and probably the best but most complicated, is our table. Uh, tables can come in many different forms. We can have different views for our tables and we can have a ton of information within our tables. The nice thing with tables is we can reference them and accumulate a bunch of data and like filter it, we can sort it, we can do a ton of stuff with it. If we were to use that, continue using the house analogy, I would say it's kind of like the electrical system within a house, right? You don't really see it, but it does a lot of stuff in the back end and it really helps make your house or make your dock really come together with all the information that you're trying to sort through, filter, and store. So starting off, I wanna go through a dock that I've created. It's just a simple time punches dock, but I really, I think it really helps get the point across of what Coda can do and how you can utilize all of the elements within it to really build something functional. So we're gonna switch here. You can see here, I have a doc already created. This is our time punch doc. We have our title at the top. Inside, we have all of our pages. And so right now we just have three pages. We have our time punches, reports, and our history page. We can see here, it looks pretty simple. Um, what we have is we have some elements here and all of these zeros are actually cal calculated values. So if we click on them, we can see it's referencing a table, it's filtering um, in certain ways, and it's giving us a specific value. So we can see here, we have like our clocking category, we have different categories within, and then we can actually clock in with our button, um, but we can't clock out. But that makes sense because we haven't clocked in. So let's go ahead and clock in. Let's say we're doing some work and we're gonna clock in. Boom. So we can see we're clocked in, we're able to clock out now. And we can see here that we have a table that is populated with a new punch. And we can see this is labeled today's time punches. Um, we can see this is a table. It might not look like the tables that you're used to. Uh, if you've used Notion before, this is actually gonna be very familiar to you. But if you're more used to something like Excel, um, you're not used to seeing tables in different views. So for example, what you're most familiar with probably is something similar to this, but Coda and all of its table functionality, you can use it to display in different views. In this case, I have a card view and we can see the group that it's in, it's grouped by a date. And that date that I have it set by is whatever today is. And so I actually have a filter to show only if the date is equal to today. And so you can kind of get a hint at how you can be creative to filter your tables and to show only the relevant data that you're looking for. So we can see here, we're clocked in. At the top, we have a uh, row essentially that is telling us uh, how long we've been clocked in for. We can see the start time, we can see the category, and we can actually click inside this and get a more detailed view. So we can see the data set to today, um, and it, it automatically filled all this stuff in, right? So it got today, it got the start time, the person, the category. We can see the time spent is auto-calculating. Uh, if I wanted to, I can give a description of what I'm working on, why I punched in for this time, 
or we can trash it. So let's try clocking out. Uh, we can see it auto calculated the amount of work that we've done today. Um, we can see if we have a different section, so we clocked in for some language. It's going to start populating in the language section. And we can see here in the total, it's just getting everything, right? It's accumulating all of the time that we spent today, and it's filtering within this. So we've had a good look at this page. Let's go ahead and look at the reports. In the reports, you can see we're able to accumulate a bunch of data. And I have it all sorted by whatever this date is. And in this case, this is actually a date range. And so we can see a bunch of things. We can see all the past. The present really isn't gonna show anything because we don't clock in in the present. But we can do like fixed date ranges. We can get exact dates. Uh, we can do a bunch of stuff. And it's really cool because we can see our data just in different ways and ways that we wanna sort it. Um, we have a little graph here and this even though it doesn't look like it, it's all still part of the same table. Uh, and we're able to plot things so we can see our different sections uh, by language, work, or learning. I think in this case, there were no clock-ins for exercise, which is another category. So it's just uh, booting that out entirely. In our history page, we can see it's a similar story. This is actually all grouped by dates, though. So it's a little easier to see uh, all the punches in a day. And we can sort by date. It's all actually in chronological order. So we can see there's time punches that are uh, descending. And up here we have our filters. So if we had multiple people that are in the same dock, we could filter by specific people. Again, filter by date, filter by time spent. And this case might be useful if someone forgot to clock out. So you could see like if a time was um, say over like 14 hours and you, you wanted to look at any forgotten time punches, you could do that here or you could search by description. So if you have people uh, typing in what they're doing for work, if you just wanted to type in and look at how long they spent maybe doing a YouTube video, you could search the word YouTube and if it's in their description, it's gonna pop up as a time punch. So this is all real cool. And all of this is all powered by a single table. Um, you can notice we're all in one doc. We have three different pages. We have a lot of different elements that are working together. But at the backbone, all of this, um, this view of today's time punches, this view of the chart, and this view of all of our history is all a single table. But where is that table? Well, it's actually hidden. And so if we go to these three dots, we can actually show our hidden pages and we'll see the time punch DB. The DB stands for database. Database is kind of a scary word, but just know that it means a table. So pretty much anything can mean a database if it's storing data. And so if someone says, yeah, I created a database in Coda, basically they're just saying they created a table. So if we look in here, this is probably what, you know, comes to mind when you think of a normal table. Right now, this is pretty much in its raw format. We do have some conditional formatting work, um, basically making this column uh, have a green background and green text. But other than that, everything is raw. And so we can actually look at the columns that's uh, powering everything that we have. And columns are really what makes our tables come to life. So we can see here we have a date column, a time spent, a start time, the end time, a category. Here we have buttons actually. So we have a start and end button that people can click uh, in order to start the actual time punch or end the actual time punch. We have the person that's clocking in we scroll to the side here, we have our description column, and then we have a trash button if we wanted to delete a punch. So if we look deeper at these columns, Coda actually has different column types. And this is useful because we can make editing certain columns or viewing certain kinds of data, and we can format it in different ways. So a good example of that is the date column. So here <clears throat> we can see exactly how we formatted our date. Um, it would be a pain to have to type in the date all the time, right? But what we can do is if we, we already have the date column, so if we click in, I'm actually just gonna remove this formula real quick. No, I'm not. <laughs> <clears throat> so with the date column, you can see we have the date auto-populated. 
Right now it's using a formula. And so it's actually getting the date for whenever the time start and it's just subtracting the section of the start time. That way we can end up grouping things later that have the same date. So for example, if we looked at the start time, uh, say we wanted to have this time punch um, for the exact date and the exact time. Be a pain to type in that date and time every time, right? But because it's a date column, we can actually select it through like a calendar view, and then we can also select a time. So we'll just change that like to 12 a.m. Um, and you can see it makes selecting data a lot easier. In the case of a time spent, this is actually a duration, and it's using a formula to auto figure out the time between our start time and our end time. And so we can see here like our start time was 1.19.24, the end time was at 1.19.12.26, and it's getting the difference between those times. And we don't actually see it here. This does also keep the seconds in it, but I actually have it hidden and I have it showing in a different view because it's a date column and it can be viewed in different ways. So if we went into the time and date options, we can see, we can show, we can choose to show how we want it to look. So if we wanted it like in a long stream, so we want it like looking like this, maybe we wanted to show the seconds. Now, if we expand our column, we can see that we're seeing that all of that information. In my case, I don't really need it, so I'm just gonna undo those changes there. But we can get a feel for what columns can be and how powerful they can be. There's a bunch of different column formats and you can really use these to your advantage. So some other ones that we have, we have a select list. So in our case, we wanted to have different categories that people can select for what their time punch is gonna be. So we can see in here, if we go to our options, we can see these are the, all the options that we have. If we wanted to have another option, um, so say we did an emoji, maybe this, and then we can just have this say fun. And so now we have an option for fun. We can change the color on it. So say we want this to be, we'll say pink. So now if we wanted to select fun, we have that as a new category. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with categories. The cool part about having a list is you can filter things by them. And so the way, if we go back to our, um, our time punches dashboard, you can see things are filtered by work, learning, language, and exercise, which are the four initial selections in our list. And we can see if we look into the formula by um, that's looking at our table, our time punch database, we can see it's filtering by like the date and if the date is equal today and if the category equals work. And so we can start labeling things and filter specific data by using things like lists. You can see here for our start and end column, we're actually using a button. And so you'll see here, if I add a new row, um, the start button becomes available. And this is because there's currently nothing in the start time um, area. So if we click the button, you'll see it'll populate with the exact date and time. If we push the M button, it'll end the time with the exact date and time that I pushed the button. And what it's also doing, and it's, it's also getting the person that clicked the button. And so it's actually a formula that we can use. We can look in people options for the value for new rows. So that's whenever a new row is created, it's getting the current user. And so the, in, 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 <laughs> so in an ideal world, everyone would have their own login. And say we, you had your own login with your own email address, whatever your name is, it knows that whenever that row is created, that it was you that created that row. And so it's gonna get the name for that. So we also have a button at the end. This is like a trash button. So if we wanted to delete a post or a punch, we can do that and you'll see it'll delete it permanently. Um, we can always undo if we need to. And then we can see at the bottom here, it's doing a quick summary for all of our time punches. It's useful like in our history. So here it'll summarize each group. And so if we wanted to summarize it or change the way that it's summarizing it, maybe we want to count. So like a count of all of our rows in it. In this case, um, since this is a duration column, it makes the most sense to have it sum everything. So it's taking like four seconds plus a minute and 43 seconds plus 26 minutes and 27 seconds and giving the total for that. 
Um, but you can really see how things come together, right? We've reviewed the dock, which is like the house again. So the house is storing everything. Then we have the pages inside of the house. And then we have all of our elements, which is creating the different ways that we can see our data. Um, we're using stuff like formulas to actually filter things and get specific results. We're using buttons to actually take action and create new rows. Um, we're using select list to describe what like our time punch is going to be. Um, we're doing a bunch of things. And at the backbone of all of it, we have a table that's powering all of our time punches. And it's a little hard to demonstrate here, but this dashboard is actually completely dependent on who's logged in. And so this is a great use case. Say you have a team of 10 people and they're all wanting to punch in. Well, if one person punches in, you don't want their time reflecting on someone else's login, right? So if someone else was punched in for eight minutes, I don't need to know that. I only need to know that I was punched in for a minute and 43 seconds. So all of this stuff is actually filtered based on who's logged in. So you can do a bunch of cool things like that. I think that, that about wraps it up. I'm going to have more in-depth tutorials on how to do some specific things, some on like formulas, tables, uh, more in-depth of how you can make your pages look nice on mobile, a bunch of stuff like that. But for now, I think this concludes it. Thanks for watching.